tailor the log backups. Sometimes when a disaster occurs, you're going to have to restore from backups, in which case the very first thing you want to be able to do is rescue that final portion of the transaction log that hasn't yet been backed up. The backup is picking up everything in the log since the end of the most recent log backup. This is going to allow you to restore all the way up to the point of the crash with zero data loss. This special backup that you take is called a tail of the log or sometimes just tail log backup. It doesn't even matter if the data files have been damaged because you can use the special with no truncate option, which allows you to back up the log even if the data files aren't there. Now, there is a special case, which is if there's been a minimally logged operation since the last log backup and the data files are inaccessible, then your log backup is either not going to be possible or it's going to be corrupt. The first case is up until SQL Server 2008 R2. The tail of the log backup in that case is going to fail because it can't get to the data files to read the data extents from the minimally logged operation. From SQL Server 2008 R2 onwards, the behavior is really badly broken in my opinion, in that even though there's been a minimally logged operation and the log backup is supposed to read the data extents, if the data files aren't there, then the tail of the log backup is going to succeed. However, if you restore it, it's going to result in a corrupt database. I don't understand how they can have made that change. It makes no sense to me that even though the log backup should contain that minimally logged operation, they allow the log backup to complete even though it doesn't correctly contain it. So you need to be careful about using the bulk logged recovery model to do minimally logged operations if there's a possibility that you're going to want to have to take a tail of the log backup to recover user transactions. Anytime I'm doing any kind of disaster recovery, including tail of the log backups, I don't want to use Management Studio because sometimes it does strange things. And this also applies to taking a tail of the log backup because by default, taking a tail of the log backup using Management Studio is going to set your database into the restoring state. To summarize though, tail of the log backups can be an absolute lifesaver. Your disaster recovery guide should say that if you're going to have to do a restore, the very first thing you should do before you do the restore is take your tail of the log backup. Because as soon as you start to restore a database over the top of the existing files, you lose the ability forever to take that tail of the log backup. In this demo, I want to show you tail of the log backups. First thing I'm going to do is create a database to use, getting rid of any old databases first. And then I'm going to put that database into the full recovery mode. Create a very simple table to allow me to hold some strings. And then insert the first string, which is going to be my transaction number one. So this is an implicit transaction that's committed. And then I'll do a full backup. And this full backup really puts the database into the full recovery model, like so. Now I insert transactions two and three. Now these are on disk in the transaction log because they're implicit transactions and when they commit, the log blocks are flushed to disk. But these are not yet in the data file. Now SQL Server crashes. While SQL Server is crashed, the data file unfortunately becomes destroyed. SQL Server then starts back up again. And when it started up, we try to use the database. We get our disconnection message. Try again. And it can't be opened because the data file is damaged, or in this case, it's missing. Now, the full backup that we took doesn't have the most recent transactions, these transactions two and three. If I try to restore now, I'm going to lose the tail of the log. So let's try doing a tail of the log backup. So backing up the log, and it says, no, you can't because there's missing files. Now in this case, we can force the tail of the log backup using the special syntax no truncate. And that happily backs up the log. And then if we restore, starting with our full backup with no recovery, and then our tail of the log backup with no recovery. And then we complete the restore sequence and allow undo to run if there's anything to undo by just doing a restore database with recovery. 
what we'll find now is that the tail of the log backup picked up those two transactions that were on disk in the log before the crash, but not in the data file. And by being able to take that tail of the log backup and use it during the restore sequence, we got all three transactions back. Pretty cool.